Welcome to Pause for Thought. This week we'll hear about the agony suffered by pigs imprisoned in sow stalls and farrowing crates. We'll also continue our series of election year interviews by talking to the mana and internet parties about their animal welfare policies. And we'll tell you how to improve the lives of New Zealand animals by taking just three minutes a day of your time. In 2009, New Zealanders were shocked when we saw footage of comedian Mike King visiting a pig farm and finding sows living in horrifying conditions. We were told by the government and the pig farming industry that this was an isolated case. But this year, we've again seen pictures of pigs living in appalling conditions. When the first footage aired on the Sunday programme in late June, the pig industry and officials said it was an isolated case. But the following week, more film of shocking conditions at other pig farms was broadcast. The pictures you're looking at were filmed by Farmwatch at pig farms in New Zealand. They show pigs confined to farrowing crates in appalling and filthy conditions. The pigs can't turn around, can't keep clean and can't get away from their own faeces. They lie in pens with dead pigs. You can also see rats running through the stalls. The Minister for Primary Industries and NZ Pork once again responded by saying that the pictures showed an isolated case and were not representative of the pig farming industry as a whole. Farmwatch replied to those claims by releasing more footage of horrifying conditions at other pig farms. The response from the government and farming industries is completely inadequate when each time they're confronted by appalling footage of conditions on factory farms. Minister for Primary Industries Nathan Guy is continuing to say in speeches that New Zealand has a proud record on animal welfare. It doesn't. The only way to end the animal suffering is to legally ban all factory farms in New Zealand. We talk now to John Derrick from Farmwatch, who filmed some of the pictures. Kia ora, John. Welcome to the program. Cool. Thanks, Catherine, for having me on. What are sow stalls? So, sow stalls are these cages that um, mother pigs are kept in on factory farms. And they're kept in these cages where they can't turn around at all for the duration of their pregnancy, um, pretty much. And so these sow stalls, they're 60 centimetres wide and 2 metres long. And sows are massive animals, so these 60 centimetres wide by 2 metres long, they can't even lie down properly without the sides of them touching um, the sides of the bar. And they're in these um, sow stalls and then farrowing crates for their entire pregnancy. So it's just absolutely horrific that they, they can't even move. And what's a farrow crate then? So after the piglets are born, the sows moved into a farrow crate or before the birth or what? Yeah, so um, they're in the um, sow stalls for the first part of their pregnancy. And then once the, they're about to give birth, they're moved over to these farrow crates. And the farrow crates are the same size, once again 60 centimetres by 2 metres, but they've got an area beside them for the piglets to go. And so the mum is forced to give birth in this enclosure where she can't move at all. And normally a pig in the wild would make herself a nest in order to give birth, and she can't. So she scratches the bare concrete underneath her, desperately trying to build a nest. And she can't get to her young, she can't nurse them. And perhaps the disturbing thing is that we've found that these cages are so small that some of these young piglets are unable to even get over their mother to feed on the other side of them. It's really shocking. So how can that be legal when we've got an Animal Welfare Act in New Zealand? Right, so factory farming, um, industries like pig production, battery egg production, uh, and also poultry production, broiler hen um, production, they're not covered um, by the Animal Welfare Act. They've got specific codes of welfare. And they've got these codes of welfare because the practices in these industries would breach the Animal Welfare Act. So the industry have got together with the government and they've written codes of welfare which allow for these practices which would otherwise be illegal. So it would be illegal for me to keep my cat or my dog in these kind of conditions and I'd probably be arrested if I tried to do this to a whole lot of dogs. But they've got this exemption from the Animal Welfare Act that allows them to get away with it. So the name Code of Welfare is actually extremely misleading because it's 
completely not a code of welfare, it's actually the opposite. It means that the animals don't have the basic protections of the Animal Welfare Act. Yeah, it's absolutely disingenuous and incredibly cynical for them to call them codes of welfare because there's nothing about protecting the animals' welfare in them. In fact, they're designed solely so they can get around welfare protections that uh, would otherwise apply to these animals. And our animal law places economics above actual animal welfare in practice, doesn't it? That's right, in practice and in legislation. So um, one of the reasons why they're able to do this is because it's recognised that if the Animal Welfare Act were applied to these um, industries, they'd go out of business. And so the fact that um, they can't farm this way and, stand, uh, and, and comply with the Act, that economic reason is a key reason why they're allowed to um, get around the protections of the Animal Welfare Act. So what law changes would you like to see so that pigs aren't kept in these horrendous conditions? Well, there's several different things that we could do. The first and most obvious thing would be to get rid of these misnomer, this codes of welfare, and would be to apply the Animal Welfare Act. Because under the Animal Welfare Act, animals must be able to display normal behaviours. And if a mum can't even nurse her young properly and she can't move, well, she's clearly unable to display um, her natural behaviours. So that would be a very, very simple step to remove these kind of practices. Otherwise, I think our Animal Welfare Act does need strengthening. It's currently under review, but I don't think the changes are going to go anywhere near enough to protect these animals. And Another misleading thing is the way that pig products are labelled in supermarkets right. and so some of them have a sticker on it saying welfare approved. Yes. What does that actually mean? Well, we found um, that it means absolutely nothing. So our organisation Farmwatch investigated a pig farm in Canterbury last year and we found absolutely horrific conditions which the industry came out and said were not typical of the industry. And so they sent out a press release saying that they were going to work with the farm and that the Ministry for Primary Industries were going to uh, work with them to get them up to standard. And by October um, last year, apparently they were up to the industry standard. So they were selling their pork products with this label saying that this was a, a, a welfare approved farm. And then we went back um, earlier this year and we found the exact same conditions, if not worse. Rats running everywhere, pigs living in their own feces, and this was a farm which was welfare approved. And the thing is, even when they, um, we find these breaches, apparently they just drop them down to orange. So they're still able to sell their pork products with this welfare approved label. So frankly, I have no idea what it means because it can't mean that the farm is anything uh, like what consumers would expect a pig farm to look like. So does it mean that it complies with the codes of welfare, which as we've been talking about, don't actually protect the pigs at all? Uh, I'm not even uh, sure that uh, they would be holding the pig farms to the actual codes of welfare because the kinds of practices that we found on this pig farm, which was welfare approved, didn't fit with the codes of welfare. So I think that they're just handing this, um, this welfare approved label out to, I think, effectively everyone. And this is a branding move by the pork industry because they're very concerned. They know that consumers no longer accept cruelty towards animals and they no longer want pigs to be treated in these horrible conditions. So that's why they've come up with things like this welfare approved label. It's a way of the industry trying to protect itself from the truth, which is a, it's an inherently cruel industry. And lots of the pork that's sold in New Zealand comes from overseas and that would also be from pigs in horrendous conditions? Yeah, well this is a key thing. If we're going to get rid of factory farming in New Zealand, the government needs to be uh, put in place legislation so that New Zealand will not accept agricultural products from countries which have lower welfare standards than our own. This seems like a really simple thing to do. It will simply say, look, if your animals aren't being treated to the standard that we would treat our own animals, there's no way that you can come in and undercut our industry. Because that's a valid argument that the pig farmers are making. We can't flood the market with cheap overseas factory farm pork. So we need to change the legislation around that as well. You were one of the farm watch people who's been filming horrifying conditions in pig farms. Why did you do that filming? Um, well, I've been active um, fighting against factory farming for over a decade now. And I gradually realised that investigation work was one of the most effective uh, things I could do to bring in the end to this industry. So um, we're, I've been um, going into factory farms, filming and taking photos for about seven years now. And so for me, it's a key way that I can show the public what's going on, because frankly, I don't think the public have any idea what's going on behind these closed doors. And if it weren't for groups like ourselves, then we wouldn't even be aware that factory farming was an issue. Mm. And what's been the public reaction to the footage? The reaction has been overwhelmingly positive towards our organisation, and the public has been shocked by what we've uncovered. 
because we've uncovered um, systemic cruelty towards animals and we've discovered uh, horrific conditions on farms. I've read hundreds of comments all over the internet of people saying that they're not going to eat pork again or they're going to go vegetarian or vegan as a result of watching our footage. Thanks very much, John. Cool. Thanks, no worries. Now it's time for the pause for thought win and fail for the week. The threatened loggerhead sea turtle has been granted a vast expanse of critical habitat along the Atlantic and Gulf coasts of the United States. The move is possibly the biggest protective initiative in American history. The new rules designate 685 miles of beach and 300,000 miles of ocean as critical habitat. The change comes after environmentalists sued the government in 2013 to force it to protect the turtles. The pause for thought fail goes to the Canadian series of television programme The Amazing Race. In the Hong Kong episode, a shopkeeper is shown holding a snake at a restaurant that serves snake dishes. The programme showed live snakes having their gallbladders removed. A Canadian vet said that the gallbladder removal was inhumane. She said that snakes felt pain and needed to be treated properly. I felt the only way they could justify what they were doing is to say, oh, it's only a snake, she said. They would never in a million years, whether it was part of the culture or not, have done this with a puppy or anything else that is cute and fuzzy. <coughs> Now, let's continue our election year political interviews. Let's talk first to John Minto from the Mana Party about Mana's animal welfare policy. Kia ora, John. Welcome to the programme. Ah, kia ora, Katrina. How important is animal welfare to the Mana Party? Well, I'll say it is important, but in fact we're a very small party and we don't have a specific animal welfare policy. There's several areas of policy where we're still you know, we're still at the early stages, so we, we, I can't um, present a formal policy at all. But, but it is important, and I know that um, to Mana members, just like most people in New Zealand, you know, when we, when we see um, awful scenes of, of uh, you know, the, the really horrible effects of, of factory farming, then we can, you know, we react the same as anyone else does, really. Mm -hmm. Mm. But most people actually still keep buying and eating pork and ham and stuff. That's well, that's the true. Yeah, and I'd, I'd I'd have to say I'd include myself in that um, sometimes. We we um, I mean I'm I'm not a vegetarian. I never have been. And most people in Mana would not be vegetarian, but some people are, you know. And um, um, but I think the the concerns that um, that that we would have relate to just the awful treatment of animals, um, completely unnecessary mistreatment of animals for commercial gain, which is what it comes down to. Basically the you know, the animals take second, third, fourth place to to making profits and, and maximising the profits that, that farms can uh, you know can make from them. Mm. What's Mana's top animal welfare priority for two thousand and fourteen then would that be abolition of factory farming? Well I think we'd we'd want to see that, that factory farming phased out. Um, definitely, and when we've looked at um, some of the various, you know, guidelines that have been set, you know, the, the bar keeps um, being being uh, well being being sort of lowered for farmers, rather than uh, you know we should be we should be getting rid of these um, of you know factory farming of hens and the use of sour crates and all that kind of thing. Um, those are those are very you know appalling practices that shouldn't be happening in the 21st century, if, if ever. Mm. One of the problems is that we have very weak animal welfare laws. Mm. We've got an Animal Welfare Act and it sets base conditions for how yeah. animals should be kept, but the pigs and hens and mm. factory farms are specifically excluded from that. Yep. Do you think the changes that are being made in the Animal Welfare Amendment Bill are going to really do much in practice to improve conditions? Well, I don't think they will because um, so much of the um, uh, the lobbying power of, of essentially the factory farming lobby um, is there and that's going to water down or delete anything that is a significant challenge for them. So, the, you know, the, um, the timelines keep getting pushed out. Yeah. 
Um, and there's a lot of things that happen beside, uh, behind the scenes that the public isn't aware of, where these big, you know, powerful lobbyists come in and they and they've really got National Party tied around their little finger because National um, feels that it can't lose its support in the in, you know, in its farming base. Whereas I think National would gain a far greater respect from people if they said, look, you know, animal welfare is really important and we are not going to tolerate the mistreatment of animals. And what we saw last week, and you know, what we see repeatedly is these, um, you know, pretty appalling scenes. Hmm. Does Mana think that testing still needs to be done on animals or are there enough other methods of testing now that we should phase out animal testing altogether? Well, I, I can't give a specific answer to that in the sense that I can't say um, we, we would abandon all testing because um, we, you know, we, um, we certainly wouldn't tolerate it for anything like cosmetics or for um, Party pools. Uh, party pools or, you know, synthetic highs and what have you. But, and then there may be some cases where animal testing is required, but if, there, if, if that is, then it has to be, you know, has to be humane and it has to be, um, I guess, minimal interference. But, I mean, we would see phasing it out altogether as being a laudable goal and mm. something, and it has to be a real goal with, with real timelines and real impact. Why doesn't Mana believe that animals should be included in the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act and the Domestic Violence Act? In Europe, animals have been in the Swiss Constitution since 1973 mm. and the dignity of animals has been in there since 1999 and they're also in the Austrian, German and Slovenian constitutions. Sure. So why, why can't we have that in New Zealand? Well, to be frank, we've, we've never discussed that and debated that within MANA. As I say, we're a small party with, a, um, you know, with very limited resources, but it is something that um, I know we have activists within, within MANA who are part of the, part of the SAFE organisation, for example, and, they, um, and these issues have been raised, but they haven't been debated, and we do need to have those discussions. But for the moment, I can't say that, that we would have those included, but we certainly believe that there is, uh, we, there's, there is the need for strong and well-regulated protection for animals in New Zealand. Mm. And do you think the Ministry for Primary Industries is doing its job satisfactorily in policing and enforcing animal welfare? Because one of the items on the agenda is calling for an independent, properly funded commissioner. Yes. I think the properly funded is the key thing. I think the that it's 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 like our labour laws, you know. They the the laws are there, but they are not being policed because there are not the resources to, you know, for for people to go out and do the inspections on the job, and so we've got appalling labour practices, you know, people being being ripped off right, left, and centre, and the same for animal welfare, you know. I think sometimes these things are deliberately set up. Um, set up to look good and, and they look fine and on paper the legislation looks all good the, you know where we're looking after animals but the reality is that it's meaningless because these people do not have the resources to get out and actually make sure um, that these things are being policed properly and again and again and again when we get um, groups like Farmwatch going in and they find abuses all over the place then we know that those abuses are routine within factory farms and we do need the, we have to properly resource those, or, you know, an independent organisation to do that because the Minister, of, I mean, the Ministry's job is there to support farming and support agriculture. It's not there to provide protection for animals. That's a real conflict of interest. Yes. Thanks yes. very much, John. And maybe I can suggest that if Mana's busy developing other policies, yep. you could just adopt, adopt all 10 items off the animal agenda and you wouldn't have to write your own policy. Thanks well, very I'll, much. I'll certainly raise that. Thanks, Katrina. <laughs> Let's speak to Miriam Pera about the Internet Party's animal welfare policy. Kia ora Miriam, welcome to the programme. Kia ora Katrina, nice to be here. We gave the Internet Party 10 out of 10 for its animal welfare policy because it agreed to all aspects of the animal agenda, the only party to do that. You're actually still working on your full animal welfare policy though, aren't you? Well, yeah, so uh, we're really revolutionary in the way that we develop our policy. We have two different policy forums online. One's a policy incubator and the other one is where we put draft policies and um, 
uh, our members can go and contribute towards the policy. So there's a lot of consultation with our membership and um, we're all about direct democracy and participating in a really meaningful way. So it is still in consultation. Um, it was put up there a few days ago and there have already been some people who are starting discussions, which is really interesting, and um, no doubt it will continue to be revised. But I suspect from the general um, kind of feedback that we've got from people that so far people are really happy with the idea and the, the basics of the of the policy and um, I'm personally really proud of it as well. Excellent to hear. <laughs> so how important is animal welfare to the Internet Party? Well I think that some people would find it odd that the, and that the Internet Party would have a stance or a position at all on animal welfare um, and they expect that the Internet Party is only about tech stuff. Now while that is massively important to us and we need to be creating things like a digital economy that uh, steps away from exploitative resource, um, resource mining and um, from intensive farming practices. Um, we also recognise the need to um, have other policies that complement our tech policies. And uh, this animal welfare one would do that because it, um, we recognise the need to start doing things differently and to bring a new vision. What do you think is the most important animal welfare priority this year? Uh, well, I think, I think going back down to the really real basics and uh, the foundation of any welfare policy, animal welfare policy, should be based on this idea of uh, non-human animals as being sentient beings. And that is backed up and universally acknowledged by international scientists and researchers. And uh, once I think we have that as the foundation for all policy development around, around protecting animal welfare, then I think we'll be good. Uh, one of the things, of course, that's come up in the news a lot lately is psychoactive substances and um, cosmetic test, uh, cosmetics testing. And the Internet Party would um, call for a ban on all uh, testing on animals for recreational products, um, such as psychoactive substances and, of course, cosmetic testing in line with what the, United, uh, sorry, the uh, European Union uh, countries have done. And would the Internet Party support uh, moving to a ban on all testing on animals? Because I'd imagine that with your tech focus yeah. that you would appreciate that there's so many ways of using computer simulation and other ways of testing now that weren't available in the past and so that should be our future focus rather yeah. than testing on animals. Well that's exactly right. I mean uh, one big thing about the Internet Party is using the technology that we have and harnessing it to its full potential. Now we don't have that explicitly in our policy at the moment but I'm sure that it's going to come up in our conversations with our members on the discussion board and um, I was thinking about that this morning before I came to see you and was thinking I might just put that up myself. Um, because we're in the 21st century, we have such amazing technology available to us, we should be using it as much as possible to minimise harm and um, pain and distress of animals wherever possible. Yeah, because it just seems that as long as um, scientists and companies are, use, are allowed to use animals to test, that's just the cheapest and easiest oh, way. And it's there's an easy not, option. Yeah, there's not much yeah. motivation for them to develop and use the technology that we now have. Yeah, and so the Internet Party would, of course, um, support the, the development of this technology and we have to go through that process with the membership and um, have to do all the research behind it because um, being the internet party and with the tech focus we're really focused on having really strong solid evidence-based policies with wide public consultation. Does the internet party believe that factory farming can be abolished in New Zealand by 2017? We haven't set a date for it but we're definitely keen to see it abolished as soon as possible. Um, we would put a stop to all intensive um, farming practices including um, dairy farming practices and factory farming phasing out as soon as possible. Mm. Yeah. In yeah. 2017 I think that might be the date that the Green Party proposed or perhaps they thought it might be a little bit later. Um, we would have to look at the research behind that more and put that to our membership um, because we have a lot of expertise within our membership. Um, but that, of course as soon as possible would be ideal. Mm. Yeah, 2017 is the date that the animal agenda is trying to yeah. <laughs> promote. So um, obviously we're trying to get political parties to agree, agree to that. that. Yeah. Well, I mean you have a lot of the evidence and um, scientific support behind you as well. So we will definitely look at that and present that to our membership also. Mm. Yeah. And what about creating a commissioner for animals, does your party think that the Ministry for Primary Industries is doing a good job in detecting and enforcing animal welfare? Well, essentially we agreed um, to the idea, at least to the discussion of having a commissioner for, welfare, uh, for animal welfare um, because the Ministry for Primary Industries by its very nature is not independent. It has to be profit focused and therefore the priority of animals' welfare being protected is going to be diminished. 
um, and ultimately animals will be, um, their welfare will be, uh, not protected, sorry, there, there, there will be, their welfare, can we do that? Compromised. Compromised, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to for it. Their welfare will be compromised mm -hmm. and they will suffer for it. Um, and so we need to at least have that conversation about having a commissioner for animal welfare because um, animals are sentient beings, um, there's so much study behind it and the sooner that we can actually have that legislated. So, I mean, we've got these great animal welfare codes such as the, the, the welfare in zoos code, um, but if it's not regulated and if it's not legislated, then um, it's harder to really enforce. Thanks very much, You're Miriam. <laughs>